Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Coach's Corner here on the Vanguard Athletics Podcast Network. I have the privilege to be joined by Mr. Mike Teague. Hello, hello. And we are excited to bring you an interview we had uh, earlier today with uh, Maya Michelle, the assistant women's basketball coach here at Vanguard University. Uh, it's an exciting time around the school right now, kind of getting the uh, spring semester off and running. Um, so we, we were fortunate enough to, to snag Maya off the court uh, after practice today. Um, we'll get back with you guys on our stories of significance, the, the, you know, the the weekly interviews that Mike has with our student athletes and those awesome conversations of, of their lives starting next week. Uh, we gave them an off week uh, to kind of get their feet wet, wet back in um, the, the spring semester. Um, but, you know, Maya's been around here two years. You, you've, you've known Maya a while, Mike. Um, navigating, you know, just kind of the ins and the outs of what's going on with Russ, you know, from, from your seat. What, what are you, you know, happy to see that, you know, with what Maya's doing on a daily basis? Yeah, Maya's really stepped in and, and stepped into an incredible leadership role here uh, within the last couple of years. I mean, everyone knows, uh, you know, Coach Davis is, um, you know, he's been battling cancer, right? Mm-hmm. And, and Maya's done an incredible job at rallying these girls um, daily. Uh, you know, Coach Davis is, is able to be around, but Maya's, you know, she's, she's doing a great job with this team, and she stepped into this program a couple of years ago. And uh, she's kind of a young assistant coach, kind of ready, hungry, ready to go, and just brought a different demeanor to the program that uh, maybe hadn't been seen, I think, a little more intense than normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she has done an incredible job just stepping up and leading this program, uh, especially in this year where, you know, we're just wanting to make sure and we're taking care of uh, Coach Davis, and she's done an incredible job with that as well. And so, um, yeah, I think, you know, you're, you're able to see with her what – this season has looked like for her, um, you know, what changes she's looking to make here for kind of the second round of conference play. The team's ranked fifth in the country right now. She's preparing them really well. And uh, I think that you'll be able to see kind of what her experience is and her life experiences as well and why she's so passionate about this game. So really kind of excited to to see uh, and hear uh, what you guys all have to think about this uh, awesome interview that Jeff Melton was able to have with assistant women's basketball coach Maya Michelle. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, welcome to the Coach's Corner podcast. We are thrilled to be joined today by Maya Michelle, the assistant women's basketball coach here at Vanguard University, and uh, it's been a pleasure. This is your second season here. Second season, yes. So uh, last year was great. Uh, you guys made it back to the national tournament again for, I don't know, the 11th, 12th, something, something times, like that. Turn yeah. in a row and stuff <laughs> like that. So um, also had a great season last year. So the interesting thing about this beginning of the year was I don't think we had a home game for about a month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it, it's always tough, uh, you know, scheduling, especially when you come out as a top five team in the country. I think we came out as top four. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and our conference has been well represented there all, the whole year, three teams in the top five. So it's it's kind of been crazy, which makes it, it hard for, for teams to play us. But um, as you were kind of booking out the schedule, we had a Montana trip and a Tennessee trip. So uh, kind of break – let's let's talk about a little bit about Montana and, and – you know, we, I don't think we'd played those teams in a while up there. So kind of walk us through just the experience of going up there, kind of experiencing something new for the first time, both yourself and the team. Yeah. Uh, Montana, man, like it feels so long ago now. <laughs> it, it, well, it was like yeah. four months ago now. It's something like that now. Yeah. Um, so heading out to Montana, like that, that was a tough one. That was a big test just because both those teams are pretty much now they're ranked. They're very competitive. We haven't started out on the road like that really aside from – you know, the Cal that we had early on in an exhibition, which was just set the tone, get a different experience in a different arena. Mm-hmm. So when we head out to there, that was for us just really trying to figure out who we're going to be this year. And it, it, it was tough start mm-hmm. <laughs> going against Montana Northern. They really jumped on us and made us really try to figure out like what we were doing and execution and all those types of things. And had an immediate bounce back the next day against Providence and like those guys, they, they were getting it. They were really going after us and forcing us to switch up our scheme and change things around. And our team just responded awesome, especially given the situation with me kind of being in, in the hot seat there with them and them kind of trying to figure out like, well, what are you doing? Like, what's your game plan? And that's our first true test of how we're going to compete against our level of competition. That's not, you know, pac 12 type thing. And it it was a lot of fun just getting them to bounce back. You know, we slept in 
did a walkthrough in the hotel, kind of going through scout things, like didn't even get on the court, got up no shots until we got to the gym that night. And it was just like, hey, yesterday's over. Today we're back. We got to figure it out. And the big thing is compete and play our game. And they really stepped up. Yeah, you, you mentioned there the kind of the transition of moving over that that foot and moving over one chair and how how different that is, um, you know, with with the team and the, the athletic department navigating, you know, Russ and his recovery and things like that. Which we'll we'll get into a little more depth uh, a little bit later in the podcast on that. So you know, we're in the thick of GSAC now. Oh, actually, I forgot about it. We, then we went to Tennessee. Then we went to Tennessee, the, the, the mini national <laughs> tournament, um, which is actually kind of like the bread and butter of Russ. He kind yes. of you know got that thing back together with the the Rotary Classic out there in Tennessee, um, you know, going back to Jackson, Jackson holds a very special place uh, in Russ's heart, you know, all those trips to the final floor back there, they host the national tournament for many years, you know, get and go back every year and play on the court where we won the 2008 national yeah. championship. We have a banner hanging there, you know, every time you kind of get chills, just walking through oh, there. Yeah, almost. It's, it's, awesome it's almost space. like a secondary pit out there for exactly. us at this point. So, you know, but that the, the special thing about that is basically it's invite only. You have to start the year in the top 25. Yeah. You know, and it's it, it's everyone's jockeying for who they want to play, you know, all that kind of thing. So we, we played Columbia. Columbia, uh, yes. You know, we shot the lights out. Columbia did not shoot the lights yeah. out. So <laughs> the, the margin looks a little bit different um, than, you know, how Columbia is playing this year oh, yeah. and things like that. And then uh, the second game was Talladega. Talladega, which – that was a that was a track meet yes. for sure, you know, which is a little bit different than you know the the style we have out here in the GSAC exactly. and things like that. So, GSAC, we're kind of getting to the last part of the first round of the GSAC. Yes. That's kind of one of the special things about basketball. It's one of the few sports um, in the GSAC where you actually play everyone twice. You know, the baseball and soccer and things like that. Yeah. You only play everyone once. So, um, we're almost done with that. And you know, what's the difference between? playing somebody the first time, whether it's home on the road, and then kind of the difference when you're, all right, we've played them, win, lose, or draw that first one, and we're kind of going back out. we got to play them again. Yes. How much stock do you put in the first game versus, you know, they're playing different now and things like that. So kind of walk us through how you prepare for a second round matchup kind of against a team you've already played earlier in the season. Definitely. Uh, the second round matchup is honestly, how well did we play them the first time? And where did they really get us that first time around? So... I really enjoy the second time because it's literally all about us. Mm-hmm. And we get to just dive into what were we doing? How did we do? What worked? Why did it work? How can we replicate that result? Because, you know, just like we are trying to figure out how to stop the next team, like they're doing the same thing on their end. So it gives us a chance to kind of implement some different counter moves and different stuff that we kind of hold on to at the beginning of the mm-hmm. season and just like, yeah, we have it in, but we don't really need to run it right now. Like we'll rep it in practice and we might've trickled it in here and there in the beginning. But for the most part, when we get that second round, it's like, yeah, I know you stopped this the first time, but now we get to kind of have that. I like to think of basketball as like, it's a chess game. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's moves and counter moves. And it's like, yeah, well you took that piece last time. Well, I'm going to take yours this time around. Like let's figure it out and let's kind of duke it out. And that's, what's really fun with, masters and the westmonts and with us and that kind of that built-in rivalry that we have but also the fact that they're we're all top five teams like we're all trying to compete and kind of go at each other and that's a really special thing that we have just having three top five teams in our our conference games alone like it really gives us a chance to prove ourselves early well and that's one of the crazy things is you have the kind of the top end part where you know nationally known top five but you know, our conference put six teams out of 32 into the national tournament yes. last year. So just the depth is there. And, you know, you throw out the records when that ball gets tipped up. You know, we've, we've had some knockout, drag out fights against yes. people that, you know, based off only on the record over the years, you know, it should be, you know, an easier game. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, so, so it's interesting. And sometimes there's a lid on the basket. Sometimes you can't yes. control the whistles and things like that. So, uh, Let's let's take off your coaching hat for a second. Let's put on your, you know, I'm Maya. I, I used to play college basketball myself. All so right. <laughs> um, how'd you first start getting into the sport and playing basketball yourself? Uh, basketball has always been like my game. From when I was little, it was on the playground in elementary school. Like all my friends were guys and everybody hooped. So if you couldn't hoop, like, you couldn't play on the playground. If you couldn't play on the playground, like, that's all my friends. So <laughs> had time to figure to it out. Yeah, exactly. I was like, hey, time to step up. And a lot of it, especially when I was younger, like, I was the only girl out on the court just trying to play. So 
I got beat up and banged up and bruised up and knocked down by all the guys. And it was just like, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. Like, this is fun. And it just kind of carried with me. It was the last thing that my parents really wanted me to do, get into the whole travel ball thing. And, you know, it's, it's a lot. It's long summers. It's expensive. It's a big commitment. So they threw the book at me and karate and other sports and stuff like that. And finally, I turned like nine or 10 years old. And they were like, all right, we'll let you play at the rec league. And it was drop everything basketball. So it's always been something I'm just like, I just got to play. Somebody's got to let me out there. So it's, it was fun to finally get a chance to go in it. And then I just never looked back. Now, if my memory serves me correct, you played for Swish, right? Yes. Growing up. So Cal Swish. Run out of the pit. So you've been here multiple times yes. before you ever came to interview <laughs> oh, for yeah. here and things like that. And then and then you, you wrap up your high school ball. You're getting these offers coming through. And your decision to go out to Colorado came down to what? Um, the coaching staff at that time. Like, honestly, I was, I was really fortunate in having Russ as somebody in my pocket early in that, that time when I was really just trying to figure everything out. And he had a really good connection. And at that time, uh, Lisa Faulkner, one mm-hmm. of his players – you know, all American, everything here. Player of the year. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Was an assistant coach over there. Mm -hmm. So he had that connection and kind of like told me like, this is where they're interested in and this is like a really good spot. So I had it down to Long Beach State and the University of Denver. And I had just decided that summer going into my senior year, I'm like, I'm I'm committing. I want to have my last summer of club to just play and enjoy myself. And I went on that visit out there, my official visit to Denver, and it was just like, this this is home. This is comfortable. The staff was amazing. They created this whole environment with their team where it was competitive, and we could all just get after it. And I, I just loved it. I soaked it up, and they had the academic stuff that I wanted going in as an engineering major. It was crazy. Which you're but, totally using to this yeah. day, yeah, you know, on a daily basis. 100%. <laughs> I'm just building things and taking it apart all the time. No. <laughs> so they had what I wanted academically. The coaching staff was awesome, and it was an environment I really felt like I could fit into. So I was like, yeah, Denver, let's do it. And then little did you know you would need all the, the warm weather clothes to head back to Montana every <laughs> fall during yes. to March for the national tournament. Still so, break out my boots. <laughs> exactly. Um, so then you wrap up your – your, your college career, you know, you get the diploma, all that stuff's behind you. And then you kind of go, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to be a, co- I'm going to be a college coach. This yeah. is what I'm going to go for. So h- how did that first start getting in there? And I had stops at like Laverne, you've done some club yes. coaching with Swish and things like that. Uh, initially it was all the camps and things that I worked at in college. There always had something going on. So I was just, I enjoyed like the game of it and kind of figuring it out and that strategy side of things. And uh, there was a fun program that I got to kind of go into at the WBCA convention mm-hmm. my senior year called the So You Want to Be a Coach program. Mm. And it kind of really took you behind the scenes of what coaching is. And like, yeah, there's all the court X's and O's, but everything else beyond that is way more important. That's 90% of your job. And I kind of got to look at that early. And it was just like, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. I want to do that. Like, I can get into this. I, I like the behind the scenes. That kind of fits my personality. I get to sit back and move the pieces behind the board. Mm-hmm. And that really excited me. So when I graduated, again, reached out to Russ. And I was just, hey, coach, like, I'm looking at getting into coaching. I'm trying to figure it out. What do you recommend? So I interviewed for a JV coaching job at a high school. And then a volunteer coaching position at um Laverne Mm -hmm. so I went the route for just like yeah like college I know is where I want to be like high school's great love coaching club in the summer but college is like where it's at that Mm -hmm. was my really competitive environment and I volunteered there for a year I was fortunate enough to get hired on the next year and just got great experience completely just thrown into it at Laverne like do a scout run the stuff manage these other things behind the scenes and it was just awesome I got so much great experience that I don't think you typically get, especially as a volunteer, but the perks of being like division three. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was great. I got thrown into it that way. And then after three years there, the head coach at Laverne decided like coaching's not the direction I want to go. I'm going to move. I'm going to do, do some other stuff with my life. And she pointed me in the direction of Brian over at Mount Sac and didn't even realize that this gem of a community college was 20 minutes from my house Mm -hmm. and just a championship program and just understand what it means to just compete and get after it in that environment. And it was a level I never really thought about coaching at. 
And it really just changed my perspective on what a lot of that is and that competition and how to get after it and how to really train kids and, and that type of thing. So it was an amazing year that I had there. And then I had this awesome opportunity to come back and work for my mentor. Yeah. <laughs> and I just couldn't pass that up and interviewing here and all that stuff. It was just awesome. So I was like, this is the fit. This makes sense. Yeah. And it was, it was no pressure at all. Cause it's not like you were taking over for the NAI national assistant coach of the year or anything <laughs> right, like that. Nothing like you that. Know? <laughs> so, no pressure at all. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been, you know, kind of a journey, you know, with Russ's health with it, you know, yes. kind of just didn't know what was going on last year, kind of in and out of the lineup, um, you know, him in and out of the sidelines and things like that. And then kind of, you know, in the off season, kind of figuring out, um, diagnosed with cancer and stuff like that, yes. going through treatment. Um, thankfully he's in remission. Um, you know, so, so he's able to kind of do a lot from home right yes. now. Um, I know you guys talk multiple times a day and things like that, oh, you know, definitely. uh, you know, when I, whenever I'm on the broadcast, you know, Russ is texting me a little tidbits and stuff like yes. that as, as well. <laughs> so, you know, um, you and Russ, you know, rock solid relationship there. And then, you know, the team's reaction to it, you know, right now we're blessed with, uh, you know, kind of like our core six or seven, um, are either third or fourth year players in yes. the program. Um, you know, things like that. So there's a lot of experience, a lot of depth coming back and, you know, play there, especially on the leadership side as well. Definitely. So, you know, how, how, how are they navigating that, you know, with, with Russ still being around, but you being the voice in the huddle, which is a little bit different than how it was last year and yes. things like that. I mean, it's been tough, honestly, for them. I know that they've kind of been like, well, day to day, like, how are we going to manage things in those type of situations? But honestly, like I commend them so much because mm -hmm. they've just stepped up and personally made things easier for me than I, I really think that it probably could be in a lot of different situations if this was happening somewhere else. And they've just really sold out to the fact that coaches is in their corner. Mm -hmm. He's here. He's communicating with them. I know after every game, he's sending out messages and they're sending things to him about just like, this is how the game went. Like, what are we thinking? What are we seeing? And same thing that I do and talking to him and what did you see? How can we adjust? Like, what's the strategy kind of going into some things? Because he has that eye, he has that experience mm -hmm. and I could never discount all that he does here. And it's it's been a huge thing just knowing that there is a consistent line of communication between him when he's able to be here, when he's not able to be here and myself, it's just a thing that they know. I'm like, look, I talked to coach. This is what's going down. Like I tell him every day, like this is what's happening. This is what coach needs you guys to do. This is what we're seeing. Like as a staff, this is how we're working. And the big thing is that they have sold out to the fact that he may not be here physically all the time, but he is here on that mental and, that type of level of just he's involved and he's engaged and whatever kind of is said on my end, like they're like, yeah, that's backed by coach. So yeah, we trust him. So we trust you. Yeah. 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 And you know, that's one of the biggest things is just that one, that one mode of communication, you know, we're all the, the ship's going in one direction, everyone's on it. And, 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 you know, we're, we're going, going full speed. You know, it's, it's kind of funny. I actually wonder, you know, put my little thinking hat on. I wonder if Russ is actually getting more out of watching the game from like a little bird's eye yeah. view almost, like an angle yeah, from up top of the pit, you know, where, where you can actually kind of, you know, maybe even see the sets developing a little bit faster oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So you can break it down in real time a little bit, you know, and not having your turn, your back turned to talking to a player that yeah. just came out of the game and stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. So that's really awesome. So, you know, um, as we're kind of hitting the, a little bit past the midway point here, you know, we – you know, Vanguard and, you know, Russ is just incredible Hall of Fame career here. Yes. You know, the, the eye is always on the national championship, you know, getting back to the final four, making a deep run once we get to Montana and Definitely. things like that. So that's obviously a stated goal from the team, from, yes. the, from, from the jump. You know, uh, I've had the pleasure of knowing Russ for, oh gosh, about 20 years yeah. now, something like that. You know, and, and his phrase is, we don't rebuild, we reload. Exactly. You know, things like that. So with that being one of the obvious, you know, goals is, you know, the day to day, like what, what are the team's goals, you know, besides the proverbial, let's get better every time we yes, step on the court, definitely. you know, things like that. But what was one of the things they wanted to accomplish throughout the season? Maybe it was off the court, you mm. know, maybe it was academically in the classroom or what they wanted to do in the community and things like that. Yeah, definitely. The big thing um, that I know that they've really sold out to this year is our inner team relationships and that chemistry last year. It was, yeah, like we know each other, but 
you know, on the court is kind of where some of that stuff ended. And mm-hmm. they've really taken the initiative from our seniors all the way through our freshmen and just, hey, I didn't like that our communication wasn't all the way that it could have been. And I didn't really like that. I didn't really know all of my teammates. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we spend half the year with each other <laughs> exactly. for you to leave half the year and say you don't know your teammates. Like, that's the thing that we have to control better and we have to know better. And our seniors going in, you know, Victoria and Sierra and Vanessa and all of them were just like, hey, we got to get together and we have to figure this out. And they just really took the initiative to pull everybody in and say like, hey, like we got a lot going on. But at the end of the day, like it's us on the court. We all have to know what we're doing. And they've really stepped up that area of just knowing each other and being able to honestly communicate with each other and dig into each other a little bit better on the court just because they've taken the time to off the court. Great. I know you. I get that this is what you like. This is what you don't like. Like, I want to hang out with you as a human being. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a team environment with this long of a season, it's it's tough when you're like, I, I like you as a teammate, but personally, yeah, I, I'm good. So I'm I'm really glad that we were able to just step up and know each other and enjoy each other. Mm-hmm. And that's been a really huge thing that the girls really focused on this year. Yeah. And I, you know, one of the things from, you know, my seed of, you know, kind of being around, seeing all the games and stuff, it, it the depth on this team is kind of off the charts. You yes. know, it's every game, someone different is leading us in scoring um, you know, and, and you know, last night Vic put up 26. Yes. The night before, you know, game high 26. Night before or Thursday, uh, you know, Vanessa, uh, Vanessa puts up game high 19. Yes. Earlier this year, you know, Tristan's putting up 16 points, like an efficient, easy yes. six for eight shooting. You know, and then Sierra just goes bonkers in a game, puts, puts up 41. Up 40. <laughs> you know, breaks school record in threes and things like that. You know, and then Fanny just. Being a freshman, you watch her out there, and I forget she's a freshman. Exactly, she you know, just she's, gets it. She's calm, cool, and collected, you know, and doing all that, and then just kind of the, you know, the other pieces, you know, Lauren, unfortunately, you know, dealing with a little bum right now, and then Hannah got hurt early, and but you know, Gabby's just coming along, you know, yes. great and things like that, and then you know, just the other, the other pieces, the other, uh, you know, guys on the bench, you know, the the scout team who's who's putting in the extra hours and stuff. Definitely before practice, you know, to learn why smart sets to run them and things like that. You know, the depth on this team is here and I'm excited to see what happens down the stretch here. So thanks for taking the time. You know, you hustled right off the, the court from <laughs> practice, you know, whistle still hanging around your neck. So we thank you for, uh, for visiting with us and spending this time with us. Appreciate it. Thanks. Welcome back here. Thank you so much for listening to this interview that we just had with head coach, not head coach, assistant coach, (laughs) Maya Michelle of the women's basketball program here at Vanguard. Uh, Awesome conversation between her and Jeff and just able to kind of see her heart, her passion for the game and just kind of the the story that she has and love being able to to have those conversations. I know Jeff, for you, uh, you know, you had the privilege of being able to speak to her and, and really you know, we get to interact with her on a daily basis. But from this conversation, what what do you think that you brought out of this, and what was kind of special to you to to hear from Maya's story? Yeah, my my favorite part is kind of just how she, how she started playing basketball, and you know, her talking about how on the playground and stuff, it was just her and the boys, you mm-hmm. know, and so how that kind of like the toughness, and you know, how she kind of you know either had to hang or go home, you know, and I, I think that's evident too in how she coaches now you know, in, in your face, want, wants her players, you know, to excel on a daily basis. And, you know, her, her voice echoes throughout the pit, you know, uh, we can hear it, you know, throughout, throughout their practices and things yeah, like that, yeah. you know, and just kind of the, the different level of intensity, um, that's there that, um, you don't often, you know, see in, in women's coaches, you know, normally they, they don't have, you know, a, a powerful voice with a lot of presence on it. Um, and I think that's something that Maya excels in. And I think that, you know, the combo right now of, you know, her and coach Davis of, you know, they're combining on a daily basis and, you know, saying the same thing to the team on a day in day out basis, you know, whether it's coming from Russ's mouth or whatever, it's coming from Maya's mouth. And I think that's part of the reason, you know, they're fifth in the country and they got, they got a tough sled here ahead, you know, with two games against the number one team in the country and another against the number four team in the country before we even get to the conference tournament. So it's, it's pretty awesome, but we we thank you guys for visiting with us. Um, Always special. Um, to bring you guys these stories of, of our coaches and just the impact the impact they're having on these student athletes and you know how how they got here and you know what what basketball or these sports mean to them. So thank you for joining us. Um, as always, you know, be sure to like and subscribe, share the share the word. 
um, of these podcasts, and we just want to get the stories out there. So uh, whether you're, you're seeing us on SoundCloud, Stitcher, um, the Google Play Store, Apple Podcasts, or watching through Facebook and YouTube, we're so glad you guys could join us, and we will see you guys next week on the Coach's Corner here on the Vanguard Athletics Podcast Network. We'll